Okay, so I've been listening to the Gom Jabbar podcast. This podcast. And it is exactly what I needed after watching Dune Part 2. And Dune Part 1. And after reading Dune. And after reading Dune Messiah. They get into some crazy spoilers that I... I already kind of revealed a little bit in my review of uh, Dune Messiah. So you guys can watch that if you want those spoilers. But the... I, I'm going to try my best not to spoil anything now. I'm just going to give you some context of some weird stuff that is canon to the Dune universe. You remember these things? These are called ornithopters. And they are the like main transportation, pretty much, in the Dune universe when it comes to like on a planet. This is This is what everybody uses. You want to know how it's powered how it moves i'll tell you in a second but first we gotta go way back in the day when there was a cru a crusade there was a crusade there was a crusade let's talk about the crusade so thousands of years before the first dune book takes place there was a moment in time where any kind of ai what have you, was basically outlawed and murdered. Yes, I, I said murdered because that's what it was. It was a genocide murder. The reason why I call it a murder is because these things were sentient, free-thinking androids, robots, artificial intelligence. They could think like we do. And there was just... There, I, without going into like a crap ton of details, there was just this moment in time where humanity was like, nah, no, no more of that. We got to get rid of that. No more robots, no more AI, no more free thinking, sentient Android things. That's the, we're done with. So that kind of machinery is outlawed and technically doesn't really exist right now. In, in the Dune universe, obviously. We're being taken over by AI, so whatever. But that means that instead of using technology as a way to guide yourself through stuff, like let's, let's go with um, space travel, right? So the way that space travel works in Dune is as if, you know, we watched this movie, the first movie, it is used with spice, the melange, that is only found on Arrakis, this planet. It's only found on Arrakis. And so they use that to fuel uh, their ways of space travel and stuff like that. But who's navigating that? Galaxies and solar systems and stuff like that, they're always moving. They're always moving around. So how are you supposed to know if you jump light speed to that planet, to that solar system, whatever, how do you know you're not going to just pop up in the middle of a sun in the middle of a rotation? Well, that's when you turn your artificial intelligence, your Google Assistant, your Siri, your Alexa, into this. This is Thufir. He is a Mentat. So, him specifically went through, like, decades of training at a very young age. Decades of training to train his brain to to think like a computer basically he's basically a human computer right and that is kind of what the spacey the 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 the, the, the galaxy's like police basically that's what they approve they would approve this and not siri or the google assistant or whatever like and so a long time ago, they used spice. They just got these guys super high on spice, like stupid high on spice. So then they could see into the future, right? And if you guys have seen Dune 2, you kind of get that. I mean, hell, if you've seen the first Dune, um, Paul, now he's a little different than Thufir here, but um, the... They can see into the future, and at this point, 
which he is at the last level of a mentat. He's a advisor. An advisor is the last level, the highest level you can get to. He can basically predict things before they happen and figure out algorithms and stuff like that. All in his head. That's what he's doing right now with his eyes like this. I mean, he's in this scene, he's talking about money. Um, but he is basically going through all sorts of data and calculations and stuff like that in his head to be able to figure that out. So in order to navigate through light speed and stuff like that, you got to use one of these guys. And they don't look like this when they're a navigator. When they're a navigator, they look a little different. And that is in Dune Messiah. So there, ch check check out Dune Messiah. You'll you'll figure out what what space navigators are supposed to look. Like. So these guys are not operated guidance wise by uh, any kind of um, like AI. No you know gps no nothing none, none of that right they are not they are not run by that they are not powered technically or not powered by electricity they are technically not powered by uh wind when they pump their wings it's not a physical thing they, they, well okay they do have something to do with it but technically they're not like a helicopter. They have no gas. They barely need to be repaired. The, the, the only thing that really needs to be repaired is out here. The cockpit, the wings, the landing gear, the shell. But if I move up here, there's something inside here. And I'm not talking about the people. Now, this is from the Encyclopedia of Dune, which kind of is... It is an approved book by the original author. Author. The Encyclopedia of Dune is approved by Frank Herbert, who created the Dune universe. So now that you have the context of this is all approved by Frank Herbert, most of it. You know, there were some extra books that came out after he died. His son started doing stuff, and that kind of changes the lore a little bit. But for the most part, what am I about to tell you? is approved by the man who wrote the story and created the universe. Inside this ornithopter and this one and this one and every other ornithopter, brace yourself. There is a snail in here. Okay, so it's not a snail, but it is a mollusk. It is a land mollusk that loves to be in this thing. It lives in here, and it is the thing that powers, that moves the ornithopter. It's basically the engine, so it doesn't mind getting shocked by the electricity in order to power this thing. It doesn't mind that at all. It actually kind of likes it, and it feeds on air particles. So flying through the air with this thing is feeding... The mollusk that lives inside this thing, and it is perfectly fine. It is not being harmed in any way. It loves to be. It loves to be in there. It loves it. And I'm not lying. Like these guys that I'm listening to on the John Gabar podcast, they are stupidly into Dune. They really like the series. And this thing is powered by a snail. It's powered by a a a, a, a clam if you will, and it enjoys being it, the, the source of power. It is totally cool with that. This podcast and the world of Dune is just so cool. I I love it. And I would get into spoilers of like other parts of the, the, the books that I haven't even read yet, but I'm totally cool with the spoilers. It's been out for a long time. I'm going to read the books anyway. I'm going to watch the movies, so totally cool with the spoilers. But there are just some things with this book, this series, that I absolutely love. And this is one of them. Just, first off, the design of the Ornithopter. So cool. And the fact that it's powered by a clam. That's so awesome. Oh, I love Dune. J you're going through this journey with me, okay? This, that's what's happening.